Chris, good evening to you. It's fair to say you're quite lukewarm about this scheme. Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing to say is it's absolutely a really important issue, reducing plastic waste, improving recycling rates. And that's very clear. But I think what the, uh, the announcement of the consultation does today is actually it provides more questions than it does answers. There's still quite a lot of unknowns uh, about how the scheme would work. Um, and for our members, the biggest concern really for the, the smallest stores um, is, is just space. As you saw in the, the piece at the start of the programme, these machines are not small. Um, and the, the stores that would have to put them in you know, simply just don't have space in many cases. So you would want to see, presumably, stores being compensated for the space that these machines would take up, and also they're going to be collecting plastic bottles at the back of the store. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of the one of the great unknowns about the uh, the announcements today. So the the machines, the, the big machines, are estimated to cost up to thirty thousand pounds each, which, if you imagine, you're a very small business, that's a lot of money. That's without upkeep and staff cost as well. Um, but the other option, a, a manual scheme where you just take the bottles and cans and, and glass behind the till, that provides its own problems. So um, Hygiene issues. Hygiene issues, absolutely. Yeah. Dirty bottles, health and safety issues, queuing times in stores. And, you know, this is a business that is predicated on you know, getting people in and out as quickly as they can in a convenient way, um, you know, and helping them shop without undue delay. Now, in Germany, when this was introduced, Aldi and Lidl, who obviously dominate the grocery market over there, basically installed machines that only took back bottles that had been bought in their stores. Presumably, if we get this system in the UK, you want to be able to have your members have their bottles recycled anywhere. Again, this is one of the great unknowns. There's the systems across Europe are, are different in the ways they operate. Uh, most of them are, are the, uh, the big machines, the, the reverse vending machines. But again, those stores are, are typically bigger. As you said, the Aldi and Lidl, they are bigger stores. Um, the, the vast majority of our members are under 2,000 square feet, which is you know, less than the size of a tennis court. These are small stores we're talking about. Um, and you know, one of the other unknowns is about, like you said, how people will get back that money. Is it on cash? Is it on a card? Is it on some sort of almost like an Oyster card? Is it you know, any number of options that are still at play here? So you know, we absolutely welcome the consultation, but as I said, more questions than answers at this what stage. Would you, what would your members prefer? Presumably cash. Well, I think there are, there are associated costs with uh, card payment, absolutely. Um, but I think there's, you know, and as the, the, the working group that's been tasked with doing this uh, for the last six months looking at this, and their report came out today and they said, well, actually, more work needs to be done to work out a proper solution that works for everyone, and, uh, and we absolutely welcome that. So where this system has been rolled out elsewhere in Northern Europe, what has been the experience of small stores? Have many of them gone bust? Um, well, as I said, the nature of those stores is typically they are, are the larger stores, generally, in, in Northern Europe. Um, and these are systems that have been in place for quite a long time and, and one of the main things they look at is the impact on uh, recycling rates and, and to be honest they vary. There, are, there will be some areas where recycling rates have, have done quite well um, and some areas where it's been um, not as much. But one of the big differences between Northern Europe and, and the UK is the UK has a very well established curbside collection scheme and what we're not sure about, and another question about the scheme, is the impact that it'll have on curbside because what we don't want to do is people that are um, would otherwise recycle normally, that they would have to walk past the recycling box right outside their home to then go and get in their car and, and recycle at a, uh, at a store. So that's another one of the questions that really needs answering in the consultation. And obviously the Scottish Government's further down the road in this respect. Are you satisfied with things shaping north of the border? Well, I think that raises its own issues because if the scheme in England is any different to the scheme in Scotland, um, that could potentially cause problems around the border. Um, and similarly, if there are plans in Wales, um, that would cause issues. The, uh, the working group that I spoke about just now, they said that they would be very keen for a scheme to work across the UK. Um, and you know, when we do get to a scheme that is workable, um, that doesn't cause undue harm to retailers and that, uh, that helps to increase recycling rates, we would expect a scheme like that to be uh, introduced across the UK. All right, Chris Noyce from the Association of Convenience Stores. Good to see you. Thanks for joining me.